Why aren't you coming out? <laughs> What's up, YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Uh, draw car, that'll do it. I'm trying stuff. There we go. <laughs> right, okay. Um, well, what am I doing? Right. Um, where are we? What day is it actually? Right, today is Tuesday. <laughs> um, I took all this into work. To, I'm still mucking about with the mill, so bear with me because I need to get this done. I really do need to get this done. Um, so I took this into work. I went, can you tell me what that taper is in there, please? And I went, no. <laughs> they haven't got the stuff to tell me what the taper is. And it's like, oh, bloody hell. So, Made the suggestion of stick it in the in the in the lathe in a chuck, and then stick a dial test indicator on the tool post, and shove the probe in and out of that, and just change the compound angle until it reads the same as you go left and right, and did, that way you can just read whatever the angle is off the compound, and from that hopefully figure out you know with the height and blah 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 what taper it is. Uh, their lathe's having issues at the minute and maintenance are fixing it, so that ain't going to be happening for a little while. <laughs> However, um, I'm not really sure it's going to help either. I was grabbing about on some forums and found out some interesting stuff actually. So these machines, there's an MOD contract number on it, and these machines were built specifically to give to a specific firm that was going to be making specific stuff be it tanks or munitions or, you know, plane bits or trucks or, well, I don't know, whatever. However, all the tooling came with it. And what they did is, because normally you would have um, dogs that sit on air that would engage with the tooling. So you get these little recesses and stuff. There would be a block on here that fits in there. However, the tooling that went with an awful lot of these old machines, um, was, was tailor-made to do that job. So, you know, they didn't necessarily care too much about what taper was in it, they just put a taper in it, and then the tooling, it had a, a thing on, on, on that end that went into this slot. And there's, there's no way you're gonna get that tooling. Um, I have found some examples online, um, and literally it was saying, you know, for, this model machine this year, blah, blah, blah. Um, and basically, you know, it was a drill or it was a whatever. And it was a specific drill size as well. That's what got me. The whole thing was a specific tool to do one particular job on that particular machine. So this has to change. The, yeah, I'm just not gonna get the tool in. It's not gonna be available. So, one thing that we did need to work out is kind of what that taper was. Um, and all the stuff I've got is MT3, Morse Taper 3, like that. Um, so they gave me a Morse Taper um, 3 sleeve, because obviously I can't get that in, because it's got a tool on the end. So they just gave me a sleeve, and all I've done is glued it up, shoved it in the hole, given it a wiggle, and it was tight in there. And literally all it's done is took the, took the blue off that I put on it up here. It's not touched it down here, look. Nothing. So that's got a Morse taper three, because it should be engaging across the full length of the taper. <coughs> so I can't use any of my tooling, which means this definitely has to change. So, where do we get to? There was um, it's a fella, I think it's a fella, I think it's Michael. M-I-C-H-E-L. Michael? Michael? It could be Michelle for all I know. <laughs> but I think it's Michael. But anyway, he sent me this great big uh, comment and stuff going, oh, you know, do this, that and the other, blah, 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 this is how I'll do it. Which was really, really good. And I do appreciate it. That, it, I mean, it was kind of food for thought. But, um, and I'm going a little bit off piece here, right, isn't it? <laughs> um, David Moore is the fella who actually went and gave us a hand getting the machine in the first place when we went up to see Doddy. 
and he knows about having to sort the tape out. And he goes, oh, I've got an International 40 and an International 30 tool that I don't need. You can have them and see if they fit. And these arrived today, and they don't. So it's still got to change. Um, but, it, it, you know, it does start giving you a few ideas. So, what I'm thinking of doing, and I would really like, you know, the machinists in the crowd, have a think about this, and just let us know what your thoughts are. Because um, I've got two options, right? <laughs> if I went with International 30, what I could do would be to um, take it into work, once they've sorted the load out, and get an International 30 taper shoved down the end here. So that taper is going to engage in that shaft, right? And then if I take the, the shoulder of the tool down to sort of like in a, a couple of mil of that face, right, there is just a truckload of meat around it. I'll see if I can get some pictures of this to show you what I mean. Um, so what we could do would be to stick this in the mill somehow and machine it that way to leave two dogs here and here, such that when that went into the taper, it would engage on a dog here and, and another one on the other side and then a draw bar just to snug it all up. So that's one option. And we have uh, that tool holder is not as big a rat as that tool holder. <laughs> and size does seem to matter on stuff like this. Um, so the other option that I've got is, is what I've seen on some other machines in that you drill a hole there and there, machine up a block that is this width on one side and when it comes to this surface it shrinks down to, to fit into that groove. That way we could machine an International 40 taper in here instead of an International 30. That tool would slide in and sit down on this face or you know just shy of it and it would engage in these two dogs that is screwed in here. And that way, all I'm doing is putting a different taper in there and drilling it for the blocks. And that would fit. And that's bigger. And just, I like the sound of bigger. <laughs> um, still got loads of meat to do it. We should be fine on that one. Um, I'm going to measure it all up instead of just eyeballing it and everything. But they're the two options that I'm thinking about. Um, but I do like the idea of International 40 just because of the, the size of it. Actually, is that a silver sort of arbor? I think this is a slitting saw arbor. I think it is actually, and I ain't got one of them. <laughs> so if I went with that International 40, I've got an extra tool I could use. See, it's just another reason to do it, isn't it? But anyway, let me know what your thoughts are. But ultimately, it's got to have a taper in it. All the tooling on the milling machines and stuff that I've seen has a taper. It needs to have a taper that's the same as whatever I'm sticking in it. So yes, I get you've got a draw bar through it that you have to twat it to get it out and essentially, you know, you're knocking bearings and stuff like that. And there are things that have got like an auto lock thing and that will this end. So I am going to have to use a taper. But they're all basically the same, it's just how you engage it for rotation and how you get the thing in and out. I don't really care what size the draw bar is, although that one might even fit. No, it doesn't. I need to get another one. <laughs> but, you know, it will work. It will work. Hmm. Food for thought, eh? Right, let's crack on. Right, I'm just going to go around and debadge it all. Um, see, they don't go all the way through. Does anybody know what these little rivety jobbies are called? <laughs> I've seen them. It's like a, it's almost like a nail, but it's it's made out of softer material and it's got almost like a screw thread to it. You see them on all sorts of machines. They're all over the the boxwood and stuff as well. Um, but I don't want to mask all these up and just paint around it. I want to have them off, give all these like a proper clean up and stuff, and stick them back in with new pins. But I don't know what they're called, so I don't know what to search for. Not on eBay anyway. 
little rivety jobbies with a screw thread didn't bring back much. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody knows what they're called, can you let me know please? Um, the only thing I can think to do is I'm going to use a Dremel, try and put a slot in it without guffing everything up, and then I'll just use a screwdriver to try and wind it out. If that doesn't work, I'm going to end up drilling them out, but I'm going to need to replace them. So if you could tell me what they are, that would be very helpful. slotting it and winding it out and basically the top just off the top just snapped off so I ended up knocking them off um, it's not a biggie though because this can all get dressed down I'll just re-drill it after it's painted and uh, get some new little rivety screw thready jobbies whatever they're called <laughs> and I'll just put them back on but I want to get all these plates off because I don't really want to damage them so that's what I'm doing next I did manage to get a couple out intact. Most of them, the heads just broke off. Um, but it's, it's not like a screw thread, it's, it's almost like a split pin. Um, if you know what they are, give us a shout and let us know because I need to order some more. Right, so I got all the name tags off. That was easy enough. I am going to have to flat these out and drill it for new ones and blah, blah, blah. You won't see any of that when it's painted. Because I'll just dress them all down, that's fine. I want to see what this is. I don't know if it's a clutch or if it's a motor or anything. Um, Doddy was gonna um, shove a 240 volt motor somewhere else down here and have a belt driving it. Um, but I'm thinking, because I, I found some pictures of these old machines and they just had a motor sticking out the side. Um, well, the ones that weren't belt driven from the, from the ceiling sort of thing, which looks lethal. So we're going to have this off and see what it actually is in there. If there's a drive shaft in there, then potentially I can just mount a motor and get onto that. Ow, that's going to sting. Probably by Doddy. So we've got bearings there. Right. Taking that off. Right, I'm tapping it out. As you can see, it's not exactly central. <laughs> Good. There you go. Uh, there's a bearing here, it looks like that bearing's pressed onto this shaft because as I'm wiggling this out, that shaft is coming with it. I don't know what's on the other end of it, so let's, um, I want to have a peek and see what it's actually connected to. Come on. Okay. 
because I don't just want to be yanking this out. I can't actually see anything in there. I can't see stator or any of that. This is all empty, I think. Which makes it a bit pointless, other than just like a really big spacer. <laughs> I want to know what it's connected to. And the only way I'm going to find out is by having a peek in it. All these bolts just come straight undone. I haven't had any seized or snapped off ones or anything. I mean, the whole thing's just been coated in grease anyway, isn't it? But, um, yeah, it's survived the test of time. I'll give it that. You're going to be the bugger, aren't you? Because you're buried down behind here. You have got to come off. But you ain't going to want to because that's in the way. Can't undo it here because I still need to get past this. And as I'm pulling this, the shaft is coming out. I need a puller. I need to pull that bearing off. Um, to get that top cover off this shaft I think runs all the way through to the other side and there's like a there's like a boss yeah you know, like a blind boss on the other side that it goes into so trying to knock this out I think I'm pulling that shaft out which is not a good thing um, I just want to see what else I've got in here have I got all the bolts out no <laughs> It's always one, isn't there? And these ones, they're dead short. So where I didn't think I'd be able to wind the bolt out because this assembly's in the way, um, they're actually really short ones and it just clears. Come on. They hide these bolts in some stupid bloody places. Um, I managed to get this cover off. Again, it's got all that whatever. I'll tell you what it is. Um, so you can have a look inside. It does look pretty clean and tidy, actually. There's no obvious kind of guffs or chunks missing or, but you know, I'm only really looking at a, a little piece of it. I think this would have all been flowed because there is a tube there which goes down into here. <coughs> And then we get an all line here, which goes up to the sight glass. So, I don't know, I'm guessing that this is basically the all chamber. I don't, I don't even know how you feel it. <laughs> haven't got a clue. Come on. Again, fingers of a gynecologist are needed. Right, here we are. Yes. Right. Another gearbox. Something else behind this, that's going to be another drive head, isn't it? Um, <laughs> well, there's sludge and crap and stuff in there. Uh, we 
where does that go to? There's a comma there as well. Well, there was oil in it at one point. There ain't much now. It's not a fella in a van, it's a fella in a forklift truck. <laughs> I am finding all sorts of stuff out about this, I think. I think. I could be wrong. Um, I just want to have the old side glass off and see if there's a feed that comes down to the front from up here, because I think I figured out how the oil system works, I think. <laughs> Why is it pushing up? That's really odd. Come on. Right. So here's that one. So there is a spring in there. Oh, oh. Again, loads of that red goo. Oops. Oh, where's that gone? I filled all the base of it full of degreaser. Just because it's absolutely just because it's absolutely caked. It should. Are you gonna come out? Ah right, you're on an all one. Right. Right, so that's a bugger, I wanted to clean that. <laughs> um, so down here, we've got what looks like an oil pump to me. Is that uh, this would be, this hole down here would be the oil reservoir. Um, I don't even know how you fill it. <laughs> but, that will all be full of oil. There's gears in here, which if you spin this, you can see it's driven. That would feed um, feed power to the oil pump. Oil would get pumped up this line here. It goes up the top. And it'll basically squirt into the, the side glass so you can see the oil's in it and it's being pumping. So that's your start off a ten. Then it splits. Um, one part of it goes into that little tube that you saw in the front. And that's just like a drip feed type, you know, squirt some of it that way. And then, the rest of it uh, goes, where does that go? There's another, right, so there's another one that basically drips onto this top gear here. So that will basically drip down and go all over the, the transmission and whatnot. All this lot still moves there. So if I move the gears, you can just see it's engaging different, different speeds and stuff. It all moves lovely. There's no teeth missing anywhere, and I've checked every single one. <laughs> there is a tube in the bottom of this chamber as well, which just goes straight through to here. Um, so basically, you're just pumping oil from here up these tubes, sending some of it to the head. The rest of it, you're just dumping on top of the transmission. Uh, and it all kind of works its way down. So this bit in here, that would also be full of oil. There is a hole there, but I don't know where it goes. Oh, there's another oil feed. So that would have to be covered in oil as well. Right. So 
So this would all need to be autoed. There's a return here from the head unit for the all to come back down. So where does that one go? Uh, that goes into this. Right, so that feeds the bearing for this top shaft and the one behind it. It's all on the same boss by the looks of things. So there's probably an old gallery in there as well. And it all goes. So that one, I think, is for the cross feed. So we've got this prop shaft down here. Yeah, so if the cross feed was engaged, then that's the power for the for the cross feed. And in the back, there's just going to be a series of gears that joins this top gear box to the bottom gear box. And it looks like there's a lay shaft in the middle of it, which goes uh, which goes somewhere. It's quite simple really. This needs to be cleaned and oil tight, doesn't it? <laughs> um, boom, 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 boom. Right. I think it's just time to start degreasing everything. I'll have the tap out just that way. If anything does get in there, it's all just going to come straight out and go back into the suds at the bottom. I just need to clean the bejesus out of it. I want to get the main body done to start off with. in it um I don't, where are you can you see if i turn it in the light there's a there's a crack there right in the front I spin it around there's another one here um if you feel it from the outside you can't feel the cracks so i don't think they go all the way through which is good i've got some of that nano repair stuff but it's on the inside and i don't really want to pull this apart because it will probably just break <laughs> Um, I've filled it up to see if anything dribbles out of it and it doesn't so I know it's it's oil tight sort of thing it's, it's annoying because it's got a crack in it but at least I can see through the damn thing now so I can tell if I've got oil pumping around it which is a good thing um, what else was there right I've degreased an awful lot let me show you what I've been doing right it's all wobbly do apologize I've degreased a lot of it so basically from there, pretty much down to there, I haven't done this bit yet. I'll tell you why in a second. Um, an awful lot of the paint is just coming off as well, so I've been wire brushing it and getting stuff off. Um, and I've gone around here as well. Um, so, you know, it is looking a lot nicer than what it did. Um, this is going to be the next bit. Um, if I turn the x-axis, oh, hello, why did that happen? Right, if I turn the x-axis, which is this one here, the bed moves left and right, and it moves left and right quite happily. It doesn't feel like there's any backlash in it at all, although, of course, there's going to be. Um, however, if you go for Y, um, it moves so far, and then the whole bed kind of goes sideways. So the gibbs ain't done up right, and there's something catching in there, so that needs to come apart. All needs cleaning and degreasing and looking at and adjusting and blah, blah, blah anyway. I want to get all the hand wheels off and give them a proper spritz up. Uh, and then all the underside down there, 
um, needs a damn good clean as well. The base, <laughs> where you can see, it fills up with just nasty. So the base, if I'm honest, is probably going to stay as it is. Um, there's a split line there that you can see. Probably everything above it will get painted, everything below it won't. Because there's no point, it's just going to get covered in goo. Right. Um, boom, boom, boom. What was the other? Oh, yeah. I need, I need help. Right, so I've been thinking about these bearings that go onto this spindle and where the oilways are in the, the cup that goes into the bottom and all that sort of stuff. Um, what's the easy way of explaining it? The, the oilways and everything else is all above it. But the only thing I've got as a frame of reference is Chuck Norris, my little lathe. So in the headstock on that, you've got tapered roller bearings, same as this, and they are packed with grease, right? There's little grease caps on the front, you put grease in and after so many hours you use, you know, you give it a turn and all that stuff, just to keep them packed with grease. Now, there is um, gears and a drive shaft, and then you've got the thread cutting gear box and all that other stuff. All that is oiled separately. And I'm thinking, this is probably, I'm probably going to do this the same, actually. I know the whole head unit should not be packed with grease, because it's got a drip feed oil line in there as well, and that's going to be for the pinion gears and blah, blah, blah. However, the bearings that sit top and bottom, I think they should be packed with grease, just because it is on Chuck Norris. Um, I don't have any like grease caps on, on the mill, on Brian. Um, so, you know, part of me is thinking, well, don't pack it with grease then, you good. But the one at the top ain't going to get any oil from what I can see. Um, not unless it's like a serious splash feed. <laughs> I don't know. To me, it's... Oh, I could go either way. I know it was put together wrong because of all the mounting of grease I pulled out of it, but I'm not sure whether to grease them up when I stick them back in. The other thing I don't want to happen is for the oil to wash the grease out and start blocking up galleys. So I could really do with some advice on that one. Um, I don't know anyone who's got one, so I can't ask. Um, I'm off tomorrow and Brett is coming in. He's going to have a look at machining this for me um, to go over what my plan is. And if he thinks it's doable, he can have that away and he can get it sorted. That'll be fine, he'll have to do it in work because I haven't got a working mill. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it's a bit too big to go through the headstock on Chuck. Um, so he can have that away and get that sorted and I'm gonna ask him about the, the bearings and stuff as well. But, if you've got an opinion, do shout up. Um, pom pom pom. I'm off tomorrow, so I am going to have another crack at this. So there's probably going to be another video of the bed coming off this, and then I'm back on the bikes. This is a bike channel after all. But I want to get that sorted so I can do the top yoke. <laughs> but it will be a bike video after that, I promise you, because um, I want to get him sorted. I've got a Bandit 1200 swing arm coming. I've been goofing about and looking for uh, different tyre choices and everything else. I think we're probably going to go with a Bandit 1200 setup. So bigger a rear wheel, and I like the look of the swing arm a lot better than that one. But apparently it's quite a common switch. So we'll be having that wheel down and seeing what's what and you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then on the Daytona front wheel, we're probably going to go with a 120 and then it will kind of match everything up and then we can work out geometries and stuff. Uh, next thing though is probably going to be strip the forks apart and get them sorted just because it needs doing and it's the next logical thing basically. So there you go, that's where we are. I am enjoying working on the milk just because it's different and you have to work stuff out. I do like it, but at the end of the day it's just mechanical stuff, isn't it? It's not electricery and all that. <laughs> anyway, sorry about the fella driving past with his van again. But, you know, this is what we have to put up with, isn't it? Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you ever so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Loving all the comments. Keep them coming because they're gold. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Laters!